the weekly starts now. I'm here with uh, Karen Kinney, who is a principal with the DLR group uh, out of Houston, and but she's also the uh, involved as a studio leader for their K-12 education uh, studio uh, down there, and she's done some interesting work. Uh, Taryn, you, you have a degree from Rice in architecture, but then you went to Teachers College at, at Columbia, to, and what happened, what did you do, do there? Well, I decided at the age 40 that I needed to go back to school. So I had, I had really seen a gap in the in my experience as an architect designing schools, and I really mm-hmm. wanted to have more training around how to help organizations change. Mm-hmm. And there's a new field out there called change leadership that I honestly didn't know existed. Uh, but once I found it, I dove in and decided that I really needed more training there. So I went back to school at Columbia and did a degree in organizational psychology. Okay. And Part of that, that uh, learning process, you, you, you found that, uh, you know, in general, uh, a lot of the things that we think about as change efforts uh, really fail, 70% or more. And you, you've been applying this to K-12 in something called the BOLD program, B-O-L-D. What, what, what's, what's that? So BOLD is an acronym. It stands for Bridging Organization Learning and Design. And it is intentionally interdisciplinary. That's the bridging piece of it. And it acknowledges that in order to really make change, you really have to have your organizational systems and structures align with the learning that you want to see. And then the physical design of spaces also has to align with the learning that you want to see in order to support that change and really have the outcomes that we want for all learners, the mm-hmm. positive outcomes. So, so you're, yeah. you're applying organizational, uh, organizational principles to, uh, to design here. And that's, that's the, the, the new element that you're bringing to, uh, to this, to this bold program. Is that it? Well, it's really that it all aligns towards the same desired outcome. So we start working with our clients on what kind of learner do they want graduating from their school. And if, if they want these different traits for this learner, then we back plan from there. So if you want this learner to have strong skills and collaboration, let's design space around collaboration. But then we also have to look at the organizational piece because a lot of educators may or may not know how to teach their kids to collaborate, or they may not even have room in their schedule to let kids collaborate appropriately. So we look at the schedule, we look at how the teachers work day to day, how they collaborate together as colleagues. And so we really look at it from a holistic perspective to make sure that they can reach that desired end goal of this learner with, the, with these skill sets mm-hmm. and really help them be prepared for their future. So how does BOLD work in, in practice? What things do you do? What, 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 how does DLR get involved with a school district? What do you do? Yeah, yeah. So BOLD is a robust consultation practice, but we also align and work parallel with our design teams. So we start at the very beginning. If there's a new school or a renovation, we do visioning exercises. We work with divergent thinking much like a design thinking process, if you know that term. We help people get outside the box and we help them understand what changes are coming, whether that's in technology or just global changes, economic changes. We help their client understand those and then say, okay, if this is the world your students are going into in the future, how do we design a space that prepares them for that kind of learning? And we work with them at different, different steps along the way. They set an educational vision. We design the spaces to align with that vision. And then we work with the campus leadership team to really clearly develop an organizational plan that they have before they even move into that facility. And I can, I can give you some examples of that. But then yeah, let's, let's, t- let's talk about an example, some examples. Of, uh, I understand you, you uh, did a major, major work at a, a uh, school district outside of Phoenix called what Canyon View. Uh, tell us about what you did there. Yeah. Yeah. So Canyon View High School is with the Agua Fria Union District, and they are going into their third year of school. 
we worked with them. Canyon View is a very different looking high school, very different for the district, but really uh, progressive for the whole country. Uh, they had a very passionate, strong leader, new campus principal, but he had never been a principal before. We had a very passionate assistant principal, but she had never been an assistant principal before. So they were charged from their district to implement all these new ideas, pedagogical, new spaces, uh, different organization in terms of how the teachers work together. But honestly, when we got there, uh, the leadership really was looking for some assistance of how are we going to pull all this off? It's so much. It's so, so many new parts and pieces. So we sat down with them, and again, it's bold as a systems-based approach. So if you start with that end in mind of this is, this is the graduate that we want from Kenyon View, then we can say, okay, what, are your, what does the culture need to be on the campus? So one thing we never think about, you never have a business that starts on day one with 100 employees and 2,000 clients. Right. You don't have a business right. like that. Yeah, yeah. But when but when <laughs> you're in high school. <laughs> school, that's what you have. <laughs> right. That's what you have. It's crazy. Right. It's crazy. <laughs> right. And as a leader, you have to be prepared for that. So what we do is we help the campus team intentionally put those pieces in place. So if you don't decide what you want that culture to be and communicate that, it's going to form no matter what. The culture is going to form no matter what. It may not be what you want. So we help the campus team develop cultural expectations and practices. So that means when that principal walks through the hall, he sees this behavior and that behavior. And we're very intentional, both for the cultural expectations and practices and the academic ones, that it ties into the facility, that they're very clear on how can your facility, how can your space actually help you reach those academic goals could you, you could want. you give a, a, a brief example of that we've only got a little time left but how, how does Absolutely. the design of the facility actually help in this process absolutely so for example in Canyon View there's a lot of glass there are a lot of movable walls oftentimes when you go into school you see a teacher who's hung up posters all over the place they have anchor charts that they like to use well, if you have a lot of glass and movable walls, you can't do that. You're gonna make that space unusable. So part of the expectations and practices was to keep clear sight lines, specifically that, so that teachers could let a student go out into the collaboration area and work and still keep an eye on them and mm -hmm. be able to observe them. And that was in there from the very beginning. It also allows that flexibility to move those walls and make larger or smaller spaces. And that allows that educator to work with students in a different way, work in small groups, work in large groups, and really meet the needs of different kinds of learners. Mm -hmm. But that rule about not obscuring the glass was set up from the very beginning. So when those teachers were hired, they knew this is my expectation. Mm -hmm. They also don't own their spaces. So ah. they knew they own a desk in the professional learning space for teachers. They collaborate there. But when they go to the learning environment, that's a shared environment for that whole grade level. Mm -hmm. So getting those things really clearly communicated at the beginning is hugely important. Hmm. Well, it's uh, really an interesting program, um, rather unusual. I, we don't hear about a lot of uh, design firms specializing in K-12 taking this kind of uh, interesting organizational approach. I appreciate you letting us know about Bold and uh, wish you uh, the best in uh, continuing your work. Thank you very much. We've been with Tara Kinney, who's a principal with DLR Group in Houston in the K-12 Education Studio, and she's the leader there. Thanks a lot, Taryn. Thank you very much.